Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, as many of you already know, my name is Wiley Drake, and uh, I have the privilege to be the chairman of the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C. And I also have the privilege to be the chaplain at large for an organization called Operation American Spring. I'm going to give you three websites that I want you to check out. Number one is a simple one, OAS, that stands for Operation American Spring, OAS 2014, OAS2014.com. That's for Operation American Spring 2014.com, OAS 2014.com. That's the first one. The next one is a longer one, but it's called Operation American Spring dot org. Operation American Spring dot org. And there's a third one that's even longer, and I, but I want you to write it down. It's called uh, Patriots for America dot ning dot com. Patriots for America dot ning dot com. Now, many of you know I do my live show at 12 noon DC time and at 8 p.m. DC time. We did a show this morning. We had several callers in. We talked about Operation American Spring, but we also had another man uh, by the name of Martin Marks. He is AKA, also known as Dr. Footsie. Dr. Footsie was a foot doctor. He is retired now, and he is a cartoonist, and he is a patriot. Okay, I found out today he was a patriot. We were helping him promote his anti-smoking, anti-drug thing, and, and, and a lot of great stuff that he does, uh, anti-diabetes and all that kind of stuff. He does a great job. He's a cartoonist. We had a cartoon character on the show. You can go back and look at the show and see it. Now, as many of you know, we're coming down to the wire. On the 12th, which is next Monday, I get on a train and ride all the way from Los Angeles Union Station to Union Station, Washington, D.C. Now, why am I doing that? That's called a Patriot's Prayer Train Across America. I am a Patriot. I am a prayer leader. I'm the chairman of the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C. That prayer conference, the first Southern Baptist Church in Messianic Fellowship and many other people are going to be hosting this prayer train ride across America. The prayer train is going to take us from Union Station, Los Angeles, to Union Station, D.C., Washington, D.C. We're going to make 49 Patriot Prayer Stops, 49 Patriot Prayer Stops where you can come out and visit us. Now, if you want to get on the train with us, that's called Boots on the Ground. Get on the train with us on Monday the 12th at about 6 p.m. and ride all the way across, and we will arrive in D.C. at 1.15 in the afternoon on the 15th, one day before the greatest patriot movement in America's history. And that patriot movement is called Operation American Spring. I've given you the websites already, and I encourage you to go there. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to pray all the way across America, a Patriots prayer train. And when we heard about uh, Dr. Footsie and what he is doing, we realized what we needed to do. We need to continue to promote what's going to be happening. Ladies and gentlemen, it's only a few days. Today is the uh, 7th. So in seven days, it'll be the 14th, we'll be en route to our Patriots meeting in Washington. On the 16th, Colonel Riley and Lieutenant Colonel Allen Coffey will lead in prayer, and I, as a chaplain at large, will be bringing the Patriots prayer train across America. We would encourage you to join us on Amtrak on the 12th, right all the way across on the 13th, 14th, 15th, we arrive on the afternoon of the 15th, spend the night in D.C., and on the 16th, we're going to initiate, we're going to pray in Operation American Spring. Why do we call it Operation American Spring? Because there were a group of patriots in Cairo, their women were being raped, their men were being killed, and there was a handful, about six or seven leaders, that were doing all of that. The rest of the government was good. 
And that same thing has happened here in America. Our government is a good government. However, there are seven people at the top, starting with the most illegal of all, a man by the name of Barry Satoro, who was ineligible to run for president because he was not born here. He was born in Africa, and I can prove that. We have proven it all the way to the Supreme Court. Barry Satoro is his name. Now, you and other media people call him B. Hussein Obama. That is not his name. His name is Barry Satoro. B. Hussein Obama was a AKA. Like most crooks, they have also known as. So he was known as Barack Hussein Obama. Why? Because Barry Satoro was an attractive name to run for president, but the communists and the one world government people thought that B. Hussein Obama would be a good name to run for president, and guess what? They were right. He ran for president even though he was illegal, and by the way, I can prove that. All you've got to do is go to the Supreme Court of the United States and look at a case called Drake v. Obama. You will see the data, the information, and you will see that I was the original birther. I am proud to be a birther because we need to know, and I'll give you another website. If you want the investigative report from Sheriff Arapaio, from Mike Zulo, and from others, from Wiley Drake, uh, or Lee Tate's, and you want to get the data, you want to get the evidence, you simply go to this website. Where's Obama's birth certificate? That's simple. Where's Obama's birth certificate? You can download, I think it's upward of 50, 60 pages of evidence. Not accusations, folks. Evidence. That evidence went all the way to the Supreme Court. They all knew about it. We gave them the evidence, and they said nothing. They would not fight this machinery that was in effect. And so we had a group of patriots that got upset over that. I'm one of them. I am a patriot. I was sworn in in 1961 in January, and I'm an oath keeper. I swore an oath to defend America against all enemies, both foreign and domestic, so help me God. That was my oath. I am still an oath keeper. I've kept that oath, even though in 1964, God saw fit to allow me to get out of the Navy. I spent four years in the Navy aboard the USS Kitty Hawk, a carrier, the biggest, best ship that the Navy had at the time. And I also was there on duty when John Kennedy came aboard just a few weeks before he was brutally assassinated in Dallas. I wrote a letter to J. Edgar Hoover and said, I believe this is a communist movement. And he wrote me back and said, yes, it is. And I joined J. Edgar Hoover, and I joined the John Birch Society, and I joined several other anti-communist organizations, and I've been fighting communism ever since. <clears throat> in 1964, I worked for Barry Goldwater although I was not able to vote for him. The reason I couldn't vote for him is, in 1964, you had to be 21 years of age to vote in America. That's since changed, and I'm glad of that. But in election time, when the election came up, I was not 21 years of age yet. I did not turn 21 until November the 23rd in the year of... Uh, 1964. Now, with that in mind, I have continued to fight communism <clears throat> ever since. Let's fast forward a little bit to a patriot action. Back in, in 2007, Alan Keyes, the former ambassador to the UN under Ronald Reagan, and Ronald Reagan, by the way, signed my diploma at my University of Southern California because I was a communications major, and I have a communications degree that was signed by the great communicator. Many of us patriots. Now, by the way, can I speak with any authority as a patriot? Yes. 
I not only joined the Navy and not only swore my oath, but in 1963, the USS Kitty Hawk carried me to Vietnam. I went to Vietnam twice with the United States Navy. I went there to bring guys back to the ship that had been shot, and I had to shoot people to get them back to the ship. So I was active in the war of Vietnam in 1963 and 1964, and in November, the day before my 21st birthday, I got out of the Navy and came home to my dear wife and my daughter at the time. So I became very active still in the Patriots movement. I joined militia organizations. I joined uh, several other organizations around the country, and I became a Baptist preacher. I joined the Southern Baptist Convention in 1964 because it was the largest group of Protestant Baptists, the Southern Baptist Convention. Later on in 2007, I was elected, not bought and paid for, but elected by the people, the 15 million people of the Southern Baptist Convention, elected me as the second vice president of the Southern Baptist Convention. And I served in 207. In 208, I got a call from my good friend by then, Alan Keyes. And Alan Keyes said, Wiley, I'm running for president not as a Republican, not as a Democrat, but with the American Independent Party. And I would like to ask you to consider the American Independent Party. And I said, yes, I'd be glad to. I was already fed up with the Republicans, mad at the Democrats, and really about ready to just say, forget it, it's no use. Well, Dr. Key said, if I could get elected as president, and I had a good vice presidential candidate that's conservative and godly, we could take this country back. And I said, I agree with you. Who are you going to get for your second vice president? And he said, Wiley S. Drake, senior, if you'll take my request. And I said, brother, i got to pray about this. And so I prayed about it overnight. The next morning I called him and said, Dr. Keyes, if you haven't changed your mind, if you're still looking for a second vice president candidate, I will take the job. And so in 2008, Dr. Keyes ran for president. I ran for vice president. Now, the reason I ran was because many, many patriots, Vietnam War veterans, Second World War veterans, many people in the military, many of my patriot friends and my patriot family said, we will support you if you run for second vice president with Dr. Alan Keyes. And so, I said, yes, I will. I will indeed run with Dr. Keyes. And so we pulled our papers. When we pulled our papers, I suggested to Dr. Keyes that we submit with our paperwork to the government for election, that we submit a bona fide, certified, notarized copy of our birth certificate for Wiley Drake and Alan Keyes. And we submitted those to the United States government with a request that said, we're submitting our birth certificates as evidence that we're citizens of the United States of America, thereby eligible to run for office. However, through my investigation, Sheriff Arapaio's investigation, Brother Zulo's investigation and many other, Mike Volan and many other people's investigation, we found out that one Barry Satoro, aka known as Barack Hussein Obama, was not and is not a resident of the United States. First of all, his own grandmother on video said he was not born in Hawaii. He was born in Kenya, Mombasa, and she said, I cut the umbilical cord because that's a tradition in Africa. The oldest matriarch in the family, when the baby is born, that umbilical cord must be cut, and the oldest matriarch in the family cuts that umbilical cord. So this baby was born in Kenya, Mombasa Hospital, and his birth certificate was Barry Satoro, Barry Satoro. You know him as B. Hussein Obama. 
but his grandmother cut his umbilical cord in Kenya, Mombasa. That means he was born in Africa, ladies and gentlemen, not in Hawaii, not in the United States, not even in a territory. He was born in Kenya, Mombasa, and we have all the evidence for that. All you got to do is go to where's Obama's birth certificate, and you'll find many other patriots, Sheriff Mack uh, and uh, uh, Sheriff Arapayo and many other posse members that have signed on and as patriots were very upset about what was happening. By the way, the patriot movement moves on and it is much alive and well. A group of patriots led by one of the greatest patriots in the history of America, Colonel Harry Riley, U.S. Army, retired U.S. Army, full colonel in the U.S. Army, uh, but he is retired and he is a patriot and he said, what if we could get 10 million patriots to go to Washington, D.C. for as long as it takes to get Barry Satoro, et cetera, the top seven leaders out of office and take our country back? We're not against the government. We're only against those illegal leaders in our government. And that's exactly what happened in Cairo, Egypt. They were not against the government. They were only against that handful of leaders at the top. So we're going to Washington on the 16th day of May with 10 million people to say enough is enough. We want our country back and we're going to get rid of those leaders. We're not going to get rid of the government. This is not a revolution against the government. This is not a coup d'etat. This is indeed a takeover of the seven offices that are there connected to the illegal White House and the illegal alien known as Barry Satoro, a.k.a. B. Hussein Obama. We're also still working on some other issues, Benghazi and so forth. And for those of you that may or may not know this, the man who was blamed for the Benghazi mess that Obama and Hillary said the reason Benghazi happened and four Americans were killed was because of a video and that video was produced by a man by the name of Nakula Basila Nakula. Nakula Basila Nakula is my brother in Christ. He is an expatriated, he is a patriot in the United States, he is a citizen of the United States now, but he was in Egypt before, and he was there and talked very uh, friendly about what's called Arab Spring. Well, Brother Riley and other patriots here in America decided it would be great if we would do the same thing. We would take over the leadership, not attack the government. We're not going against the government. First of all, let me say we're not taking any knives. We're not taking any guns. We're not taking any explosives. We're taking two things with us, the Bible and the Constitution. Why? Because we're patriots. And I mentioned earlier today, I met a new man today I've never met before except by video. But I found out he's one of us. I found out he's a patriot, and he is doing some great things in helping people as a patriot. But one of the ways I want to ask him to very quickly come on board with us, today is, what did I say, the 7th? The 7th, we only have a few days before we go to Washington. And I want him to help us as patriots promote it. And I found out something about him that I want him to tell us about, and then later you'll see pictures. You're going to see him, but later you'll see it. But he has a thing called Freedom Family. Freedom Family. This gentleman's name is Martin Marks. Martin. Thank you, Wiley. You Appreciate see that red square there? Yes. Yeah, that is square. your camera, and that is your microphone. Okay. Tell us about Martin Marks. Tell us about the Freedom Family, and tell us where we're going here with pictures and so forth. Okay. Uh, I'm a uh, podiatrist in the state of California. Uh, I'm retired as of this point, and then I decided how much I love this country. I've, I've developed cartoon characters for kids against violence and drugs. 
in a humorous way to be able to get a message to them in making it so they'd be able to learn messages against the drugs and violence. I was asked by someone a couple of months back about, hey, can you create maybe a cartoon of a, a new American hero? And he told me about Operation American Spring, and I didn't know if I could do it, but then something, the good Lord gave me the thoughts through my mind, what they should look like, and I created a family, where I call family freedom. And there's four basic patriots, and one is Patriot Paul, and he's like a Superman kind of a character, okay, wearing the garb of what they would have worn probably back in the olden days with the Patriot hats and red, white, and blue and a cape, etc. And then he's got two other members. One is called Billy Wright, but that's spelled W-R-I-G-H-T, and Billy carries the Bill of Rights in his right hand. And then it, there's another little character, and her name is Connie, like Connie from the Constitutionalists. And she carries in her right hand the Constitution. And then there's the matriarch of the family, and she's, we gave her name Frida. And then I figured, hey, why not make it Frida Freedom? So it's the family freedom, sort of like America's team, but this is America's family. <clears throat> and that's what it is, and we're hopefully we're going to get something to uh, Mr. Drake, or Pastor Drake, and I'll be able to go home and I'll be able to send him some of the cartoons. And if we can get a message out, even on teaching kids and using the kids to, so we can learn about how our country was formed, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the rights that we have as individuals that we are being taken away from us, okay? And if we put it in a humorous way, I believe that kids and people will know that these are our rights and to learn and study it more. Even when I was going to school, I always was taught, always remembered, there was three forms of government. There was the uh, executive, legislative, and judicial. I only found out recently since I got involved with this organization, uh, 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 lost my mind of thought, uh, uh, the Common Core Juries, uh, uh, Common, I think it's called, you know, uh, help me Wiley, what's that? Oh, I'm drawing a mental blank yeah, I'm drawing a, that's what happens when you, when you, when get, you get old, yeah. when you get past 40, yeah. and we, oh, Common Law Grand Juries. Common Law Grand Juries. Yeah, yeah, and when I you. talked to somebody that started, I didn't even know what it was about because I was contacting patriots throughout the country, trying to share with them what we're trying to do with our problems that are out there. We're, we're defeating and destroying and breaking up the American family. And by doing that, it, with the infiltration of drugs and whatever, you know, kids do not have any hope no more. We got to instill that and give that back to them. So if we could do it in a fun kind of way that they can relate to the cartoons, why not also have patriot heroes? So with the common, common law grand jury, I not only that, I designed and, and made, well, I think it was Justice Scalia, and don't hold me to it to the year, I think it might have been 1992, that I guess he ruled on a Supreme Court ruling, that they decided, <clears throat> or that the decision was, is that we have, Yelling. as the people, it's the fourth power. It's the power of the people. It's common law. I, I never knew that until I started reading up a little bit. So I made kind of a cartoon, and maybe I'll give it to Wiley. He could put it up on the, on the Internet and we'll share it. Around. And it's like the hand of God with the three other branches. Amen. And the, and the branch of the power is coming from the people. That's our power. That's our right. That's right. I'm not against violence. I'm, I'm, I'm totally against violence. We, we've got to, what our problem in this world, and maybe in this country, I've always said to people, we all came into this world ignorant. Yes, ignorant. That's right. Let's not leave it that way. That's right. Amen. We've got to educate us. Amen. And thank you, Wiley. Education is indeed the key. And ladies and gentlemen, I use a term, there are a group of people in our government that are idiots. And I'm not saying that and doing that to be mean to them. What I'm saying is they are idiots. And the word idiot comes from the Greek. The word idiot is 
idios in the Greek, and we translated it over into English, uh, into the word idiot. And I'm saying to you, uh, Barry Zatoro and those other six people in the White House, uh, whether it's uh, Eric Holder, Nancy Pelosi, uh, Bonner, Conley, uh, a Vice President, uh, uh, what's his name? I can't think Biden. of his name. Biden. Uh, is uh, yeah, it's Biden is time. Yeah, Biden is time, and we're going to get rid of him. Uh, one of the things that we're going to do here, life, if you can hang on for a minute, I was talking earlier with our producer. We're going to be producing some cartoons, and we're live on the show right now, but I wanted to, he told me that they could put it on YouTube, and uh, we need to figure out how to do that, but I'll show you what happens here in a minute. Did we get him out of the shower yet? Okay, well, all right. Well, we'll do with that. We'll see if I, I have him and I also have Jack coming over. Okay, all right. I well, two people. All right, get who you can. Ladies and gentlemen, in the very near future, the reason we're holding off a little bit on this, we're going to produce this. This gentleman here is going to produce and tell us the cartoon characters that you're going to produce again. The family and, and the characters. Family freedom. Uh, family freedom consists of uh, uh, Patriot Paul. Sort of like the superhero, Amen. okay? And he wears, let's say, I think it's a blue outfit, and he has a cape that's the red and white stripes of the flag. Uh, he has, uh, I think they were called spats. They used to yeah, be, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, yeah. in the old days. But what, what I made, everybody was looking for, well, what do you want to put him on? Is he going to have a, a high-speed car, like a Batman, or this <laughs> or that? I said, I no, it. let's do something a little different. So I says... Why not to attract kids? Yes, amen. And to get them in there, okay? Why not a skateboard? Boy, my grandsons I, are going to love this. I don't know if anybody's ever thought about a skateboard. So it's not like they'll be riding on the regular sidewalks in the street. Maybe it'll be like a super fast speeding kind. Of, that'll be able to. They'll be able to swoop in all over, go down into what you would have maybe I call an NSA amusement park. All right, I love it. Like NSA amusement park, maybe shaped like the United States. And then they would swoop down and they'd go into each little area, each state, by, let's say the Grand Canyon. Yeah, And they'd amen. swoop down and then they'd take, pick the people up out of tyranny and bring them to freedom. Amen. And then they would be handed off. Billy Wright or Connie would just touch the person and it would automatically kind of like make a duplication. So they'd automatically get like the Bill of Rights and the Constitution. It would be sort of like you're handing like a baton. Yes. This is a great relay I race. It. I love it. That we're trying to make, bring all of Americans back together. We're only one people. We're only human. That's right. And we've got to fight for our rights. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, when we go to Washington to fight for our rights, we're going to be at the Lincoln Memorial on Shabbat Shalom on the 16th day after we've initiated Operation American Spring. We're going to Lincoln Memorial, and I'm going to stand on the very spot where Dr. Martin Luther King stood, and there's inscripted there in that cement right now the words that he said that he's looking forward to the day when men are judged by the content of their character, not the color of their skin. And we're going to be there for that. All right. Swap places with uh, Jensen there. And yes, I'm going to show you what we're going to do, Jensen. Oof. We're live on the air right now. But what I want to do is I want to go off here in a minute. And as you can see, we've been on 28 minutes. And I'm going to see if we can uh, indeed publish this to uh, YouTube as well. And I wanted you here when we went off. Now, right. ladies and gentlemen, we're coming back later with those cartoons from Dr. Footsie. We're going to have the Freedom Family. We're going to have Paul the Patriot and Connie the Constitutionalist and, uh, and uh, Billy Wright for the Bill of Rights. We're going to have those cartoons and we're going to be producing them. And now we're going to go off the air and say God bless you and have a great day.